Hi and welcome to another episode of Sailing Melody. Uh, we didn't manage to get the GoPro on this morning, it was a bit hectic getting out of the marina, uh, having to call up the lock keeper and so on. Uh, but we're underway now and heading for Fishguard today. So it's a little bit more windy than we'd like, but the sea conditions are good. It was with a niggling sense of foreboding um, that we motored out of Milford Haven that morning. After passing uh, Milford Haven itself, you go past Stack Rock Fort, which is a three-gun fortress uh, built between 1850 and 1852. And then you head up uh, around St Anne's Head before making for Jack Sound, which is a, um, a ferocious tidal race between Skoma Island and uh, mainland Wales. I've been through uh, Jack Sound and Ramsey Sound before and I've never really had a problem, uh, but I was very aware that this is a dangerous stretch of water that we were entering uh, and I couldn't really eat my breakfast that morning due to uh, just the uncomfortable feeling in the pit of my stomach. True to form, uh, Jack Sound showed itself to be a bit, shall we say, frisky. Uh, I didn't manage to turn the GoPro on because uh, uh, by the time things got uh, interesting, it was far too dangerous to go messing about on the radar arch and fiddling about with the camera. Uh, but here's a little clip of what it looked like from shore and I can tell you it was exactly uh, like this, a very exciting experience. The state round here is just so weird. We're, we're doing between six and nine knots over ground when the current grabs us and takes us. We've got full control, it's, it's, it's not a problem. Here we are, we're through Ramsey Sound. Uh, just setting a course now for Strumble Head. The stretch from Ramsey Sound uh, up and around Strumble Head uh, to me, uh, it seemed uh, a walk in the park. Um, oh, this is this is wet now. We've got a great big swell coming in from behind us. It wasn't until uh, afterwards that Tim, who, who was on the helm and looked as cool as a cucumber at the time, told me he was having real trouble keeping us going straight. So a few times he found himself in full tiller with the boat still wanting to turn side onto the waves. Uh, but of course he didn't show any of that at the time, like a true professional. Well, we're in Fishguard. Uh, that was a heck of a trip. Jack Sound was a bitch. The bitches were not a bitch. But we're in Fishguard and we're at anchor. Uh, we were supposed to pick up a mooring ball, but unfortunately uh, the hardmaster said somebody else has already got it, so I'm guessing it's him over there. Him over there, I think, has got our mooring ball, which is a bit of a shame. Um, there is a, another mooring ball over there, but he said that one's a bit too shallow. So here's what we did. We came in and just dropped anchor to begin with, and then we waited until low tide, excuse me, waited until low tide, and then at low tide, we've come in until we've got one meter on the lowest tide, and we dropped anchor and put out all of our chain, uh, and then we dragged anchor. So we repositioned and dropped anchor again, and then we dragged anchor again, now I think we've finally got the anchor set correctly. Uh, it's supposed to be good holding here. Uh, the the harbour master said it's very good holding, so um, should be fine. Uh, so transit-wise, we are pretty much directly between the, the point of the two headlands. Uh, so we're nicely sheltered. We've got a southerly wind coming in from that south, coming from there tomorrow, uh, blowing at force eight. So we want to be in this little bay, sheltered by, by the cove. Can you see this beautiful cove? So we're pretty much directly uh, in line with that headland. And if I pan around slowly, I don't like to do fast pans, it makes people feel sick. There's Fishguard Lower Harbour, which is too shallow for us, dries out completely. And then directly opposite is that one. Now there's a boat here, so we're keeping an eye on him. We don't want to clout or clatter him. Um, and then there's another boat behind us. There's a beautiful Elizabethan thing, looking thing over there. And there's an expensive looking catamaran over here. And then back fully round, there's an expensive looking 
a posh boat with a sugar scoop over there. I've got three anchor watch alarms on, one on the GPS, one on Navionics on the iPad and one on my phone. The plan was to row ashore this evening and have a look around the harbour, but which we might do, but we'll, we'll have some food first, but I want to be absolutely certain that we are not dragging and that the boat is sitting pretty before we go anywhere. situation. Areas of low pressure will dominate the weather over the next couple of days, bringing showers or longer spells of rain and strong winds at times. There's Miss Rosie in Falmouth. Seen me in that yeah, just about, it's just wide angle enough. It's the handy thing about GoPros. <laughs> yeah. So about 10 years ago, I had a boat called Morning Sun and we bought her from Pembroke Dock and sailed her around the route that we've done today. And she was moored here for a fortnight. We left her here for a fortnight, just exactly here, until we could uh, get her back to Porcelli. Um, you might be wondering why we didn't do the same thing today, and it's because it dries out here, and Morning Sun, being a bilge keeler, was happy to dry out, uh, and Miss Rosie, being a long keeler, uh, isn't. Morning, morning Sun, eventually, we moved from Porcelli up to Carnarvon, and then sold her to a guy called Frank and she's a big strong boat called a Hartley 30 uh, bilge keeler, uh, New Zealand design so this is Fishguard Inner Harbour and if it didn't dry out it would be uh, perfect for us but unfortunately it does so it's not we spent the next couple of days quite pleasantly exploring Fishguard and keeping an eye on Miss Rosie. Uh, the fort on Castle Point which overlooks the bay is very interesting and has some cool buildings along with a bunch of cannons which apparently uh, were one of the few pre-Second World War coastal defences to have fired shots in anger. Uh, the fort was built in 1781 uh, and successfully warded off a uh, French invasion in 1797 apparently with a single cannonball. Apart from doing everything else on the boat, Tim is now feeding a bee I'm some sure sugar water. No, I'm not sure how to go about it. <laughs> Sound it rough, Tim. There you go. Oh, oops. Get on, get on. You can do it. On, get on the spoon. As always, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support us to continue making these videos, you can go to our Patreon page and help us out that way, just click the link in the description.